What is up, everybody? Welcome inside our Champion Chevrolet NSN studio. He's Jared Lucas. I'm Alex Margulies. Our ninth and final Jared Lucas show. And uh, certainly want to thank all of our sponsors of this program, uh, including Key Acura of Reno, Wolfpack Moving, and Bradley Drendle and Janae. Uh, crazy, Jared. It feels like just yesterday we were starting this thing, and, and now here we are. Season's over. Uh, I, I imagine it kind of just went by in a blur. Uh, everything went by really quickly. And, yeah, just like you mentioned, I feel like we just – couple months ago we were talking about how we we're going to set this up and you know who can help us out in the process trying to get this thing done and so now to be in the last episode season's over it's just kind of goes to show how quickly you know just in life just like yeah that, you know so yeah pretty crazy I know it's kind of a reminder for me it's like just slow down and enjoy the moments right, right? because right. Uh, it, if you get too carried away it's like it is over in a second and, right. and it's and it's gone by uh, we got a lot to get to on today's show. It's just going to be me and Jared, so we're going to have a lot to break down. Uh, we're going to go through some of your top career moments, not only at Nevada, but also at your previous stops, maybe even some high school, uh, which you obviously have had a, an amazing career down in Southern California. And then I'm going to let Jared put his GM hat on a little bit and, and figure out how would you kind of retool uh, the Nevada roster. Obviously, Jared's gone. Keenan's going to be gone. Some big pieces, uh, some big spots on that roster uh, opening up and then uh, what's next uh, for Jared coming up uh, as he looks forward to his professional career. Uh, first though I'm gonna have to bring up a subject that's probably not uh, your favorite conversation right now but let's go back uh, to what happened in Salt Lake City. Uh, it was an amazing atmosphere yeah. uh, between you guys and Dayton and um, it, the game had so many interesting swings. I mean you guys went on an insane run towards the end of the first half and really carried that in to the second half, had, had all the momentum in the world, and then it just, in a flash, right. it was gone. I mean, has, has anything ever happened to you quite like that in your basketball career to see a 17-point lead with seven minutes left, like that kind of situation, like any point in your basketball life? No, uh, I've never been in that situation ever before, and it sucks that that was the last game of my career, you know, and you wish that when you're in the game that you could try to slow things down um, to go, all right, now we're down 10. Let's take a breath. Like, let's what just we gotta relax do? here. This yeah. is what we got to do to get the bucket. But, I mean, everything happened so quickly, and like I said, I wish I could do some things. This is a loss. I mean, it, it's, it's taken me, I think, two days ago I felt, Finally starting to like. Maybe on Monday. I think, I think Monday was the day where I was like, you know what? I'm all right. It's you like know? those stages of grief, right? It's like yeah. first you're, you're, you're angry and you're sad and then you're depressed it's, and then you're angry. Like you probably go through these, these cycle of emotions. I can only imagine. I mean, me as somebody who's not playing, like I'm sitting there and I like the next day I have like the, I, that like sick feeling in my yeah. stomach. Like I can't imagine what it's been like to kind of process that for you guys. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and it's something that, like I said, took several days to process. I was probably the last person um, you probably want to be around for those couple of days. Like you said, anger, uh, sad. Yeah. Um, just did hurt so much. Um, but, you know, you have to take a look at everything in perspective and go, wow, it was a really good year. Um, but, yeah, it definitely hurt. But it was a tremendous atmosphere in Salt Lake to get to the NCAA tournament back-to-back -to -back years. Not easy. Um, so, yeah, that was a great accomplishment, but definitely a, a very, very tough loss and I'm not one that I'm going to forget anytime soon. All right, so as you kind of go back and have had a chance, I'm sure you've replayed, like, situations in your minds. Uh, what do you think was kind of what – I mean, obviously you have a situation where a team can get hot. Dayton right. is one of the top three-point shooting teams in the nation, and they showed how hot they can get. So there was the combination of that, and then obviously you guys uh, – could not execute on offense for a period of time. As you kind of replay the sequence of things that happened in your mind, how do you kind of break it down and explain it? Well, I think we had way too many careless turnovers. At the end of the game, uh, especially that last seven or eight minutes, I mean, we had, I mean, one time we just got the ball out of bounds and just threw it right back to the other guy out of bounds. Just kind of just plays where it's like, what are we doing, fellas? Um, you know, we threw the ball over the top one time, a freebie, shooting the three. And, and once again, with teams like Dayton, that's a team that, like you mentioned, one of the best teams in the country. They have one of the best shooters in the country who shot 49%. He was probably up to about 51 after he played us. Yeah. He was five for eight. And you guys night. contained him in the whole first half. I think he had one three. Yep. And, until, then, and then went off at the end of the game. But I guess it's one of those things, like, you don't give a team like that life, right? Yeah, is, that, is that the especially lesson? Especially a three-point shooting team. You can't let and, – and especially with an elite three-point shooter like that, you see one go through the basket. Now, now for a guy like that, I mean, it's back to normal, back to reality, and that thing could turn into an ocean like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, definitely 
Uh, careless errors, I think, were big time that hurt us, and then we just had too many turnovers. Uh, we couldn't get into a flow offensively. We don't take care of the ball. You take bad shots, turnovers. Other teams get wide open threes. We never got to set our defense. So, what what was going on during those timeouts? Like, what what, what was the the uh, obviously the NCAA tournament just has a different feeling. If you've never been to one, um, I was sitting there with Shannon, and it was her first time. And I told her even from the beginning of the tip, like the energy inside of an NCAA tournament game is something you just can't explain. Like there there is a there is just a feeling in the air that yeah. and I'm sure the intensity of that is is even far more extreme for the for the guys playing um I'm sure you were feeling that a little bit and you start having that thought of like okay you don't want to blow a 17 point lead so what were kind of those conversations like as that lead was like slowly starting to dwindle uh you know it's it's hard to calm people down down I think as an athlete when you're in the moment um and being as competitive as we are it's hard to just say hey fellas slow down um, as much as it sounds easy, it's not. Yeah. Um, but for me as the leader, I remember getting to several huddles and, and fellas, like, and we even had team huddles. That's what we broke from the coaches huddle as a team, as our, the guys are on the floor. I, I brought everybody in. I said, guys, I mean, and I remember telling guys when we were up 17, I said, this is NCAA tournament. Like, don't like, let up. You can't, like, you can't stop. And I said that to the guys. Um, this was after the coaches had talked to us. And I said, that you, we can't let that happen. And, uh, you know, what do you know? But that goes for me. I probably could have done a better job leading. But you just try to calm guys down because, everything, like I said, everything happens so quickly. When you watch on TV, you can, oh, man, we got to do this, got to do that. Or it looks a little easier from the stands when you're in the moment mm -hmm. and everything is it's hard. Um, but, yeah, you know, it was definitely be something we could have stopped, and I've never seen anything like that in my career. Um, and the NCAA tournament can, like I said, is March Madness. So. I've been it's on the, it's I, madness for a reason, right? I've been on the good yeah. side of March Madness. Uh, I've been fortunate to make an Elite Eight run, and I've, now I can say I've been on the other side, yeah. sadly. And it's unfortunately on this side of it, but this is what makes Mar March Madness special. You right. know, for Nevada fans, they've seen a Wolfpack team come down 25 points in an NCAA tournament game to win, and now witnessing the other side and feeling both sides of that emotion. But it is one of those tournaments where – Anything can happen, right. and that is why, you know, you can have a 14 seed beat a three. You can have a 16 beat a one. You can have a team blow a 17-point lead. Anything can happen, and so uh, I'm sure some lessons learned in terms of just you just never, ever let up, yeah. especially in that environment. Uh, I do want to ask you, too, because I know a lot of people have commented towards the end of the game. So in the beginning of the game, you were, your shot just wasn't going. Right. I mean, it, shots were not falling. Then you took a charge. And it just seems like everything was falling, right? Then you yeah. got into your groove. But over like those last seven minutes, I think you only took like one shot. Yeah. Was that frustrating that you guys weren't able to find more open looks for you, especially I think at the end of the game, you know, as you're getting into those final two minutes, not having an opportunity maybe to hit that game winning shot or game tying shot. Um, yeah. Was that frustrating? Uh, it definitely was frustrating, um, you know, but there's no guy or no coach that I'm going to point out and say, oh, this is the reason why. You know, as right. a team, we just weren't able to execute at the end of the game. And then, um, you know, yeah, it, it was a little frustrating at the end, but I could have done a better job trying to get open, um, you know, especially towards the end. I think Nick got stuck once or twice. Keenan got stuck in an ISO. Um, but, you know, and the coaches, the coaches did a tremendous job our last two or three minutes, um, you know, Every, every play was trying to get the ball to me the last two or three minutes, so nothing goes to the coaches. Uh, every, like I said, every play the last two or three minutes we drew up, it was an action to try to get me open. Mm. Um, you know, and maybe the teams probably just did a really good job defending it, but yeah, it, uh, yeah they, they, they did their job. We just, we just couldn't do ours. All right, so obviously uh, not how the season uh, wanted to end, but as you talked about before, and we'll get into this on the other side, uh, Pretty incredible season uh, for you as a senior and, and just as a team and, and uh, you know, putting the, this team into a position where moving forward, uh, a lot of success ahead. So we'll take a look back at the season that was for Jared, including uh, a deeper look at some of his top career moments. Crazy, I'm sure, to even think about that, your college career yeah, is uh, over. It, it's, uh, yeah, it's taken me a little while to think about it, but, uh, yeah, it's a little crazy. All right, so we're going to dive into that more when the Jared Lucas Show returns right after this. All right, we are back on our final episode of the Jared Lucas Show. Uh, let's talk about first this season, Jared, because it was an incredible year uh, for the team. You guys were so close again to, to maybe winning the Mountain West Conference yeah. uh, outright. Um, you know, a couple games don't go your way. But ultimately, I mean, just some incredible wins on the road at Utah State, which is an, an almost impossible 
place that I've seen for Wolfpack teams to go get wins. You know, getting a, a tough win at UNLV, getting a, a win at Boise State. Um, there were really some hallmark games. And then, of course, that insane buzzer beater that yeah. you hit at the end uh, in Fort Collins against Colorado State. I mean, I'm sure there are so many memories of this season and the last couple of years that uh, will definitely linger for you. Yeah, I mean, there was, there's plenty, but I think this year we're trying to win on the road in college basketball is a very, very hard thing. Um, so to, for us to be able to go to Logan, which I just saw Jeff Goodman put something out, one of the toughest places to play in college yeah. basketball. Yeah, oh, it is. Um, and then you go to Boise State, you win at Boise State, win at Colorado State, was a, a basically all-American point guard uh, with an amazing atmosphere. Those are hard things to do. People don't realize, you know, uh, to win on the road in college basketball is extremely hard. So great job by the guys, and it goes to show a really good year that we had. All right, give me – let's go – can we do, like, top five, like yeah. top career moments? Yeah. Do you want to start, like, at five? What would be, like we'll – start at five. Down five to one, give me, like, your the most memorable moments of your career. Okay, so being in college for five years, you know, you have a decent amount of stuff to choose from. Uh, so for me, I'd say probably number number five – we'll start at number five – would be getting my first start, uh, my college career. That was at Oregon State. We had played Arizona State, um, and I think that was kind of springboard of the rest of my career. Um, you know, I didn't start the first ten season or first ten games of the mm. season, and then I get my first start against Arizona State, uh, and I had 18 points, a really good game as a sophomore. It just kind of gave you that confidence. Gave me the confidence. Yeah. Gave the coaches the confidence mm -hmm. that I can do this. And Arizona State was really good that year with Remy Martin. Um, and then that next game, we went on the road. We won at Oregon. Uh, I was 21st in the country with uh, Chris Duarte, and I uh, had a really good game that game. And uh, from then on, never looked back because at Oregon State, we changed starting lineups all the time. Um, so to be able to get in the starting lineup, I knew that I had to. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to get in there, you had to earn it. we had to win. Yeah. We had to earn it, but we had to win. And if we won, I would stick in it. We won three games in a row, um, two on the road, one at home, but started with that Arizona State game. Uh, and then I'd say go to number four. This one was um, – my sophomore year as well. Uh, we played in the Sweet 16 against Loyola Chicago. I hit a big shot with a minute left, 53-49. Uh, um, like I said, Sweet 16, uh, knowing if we won, we'd be going to the Elite Eight to play Houston. Uh, and I hit that shot to take my team to go up seven. Uh, so that was a very, very can't imagine moment. what the feeling would be like for that oh, on that yeah. stage. You know, I mean, just unreal. Up four, we're up four. Um, obviously, you don't score. Other just teams just it. go down. And to be able to go up seven, you ice the game with one minute left. Uh, number three, hopefully I'm not at, rambling on too long. Number three, no, this is good. I would say I had a game-winning free throw versus Colorado. Uh, that was my sophomore year as well. That was in the championship, Pac-12 championship game. Uh, game-winning free throws. I you guys didn't that year. You guys had to win the Pac-12 championship to get in. Yeah, yeah, we had to win. Like you guys were not going as an at-large. No, no, we weren't. We weren't going in. We got fifth in the Pac-12 that year, ten and ten in conference. Um, the Pac-12 was really good. We got five teams in that year. And um, I remember I hit game-winning free throws against mm. Colorado to win uh, win the Pac-12 championship. I hit both, or I hit one for two, but right before I hit two big ones. Um, so we were up two with one second left. They got to take a three-quarter court shot, miss it, and everybody stormed Dang. the court. And I was able to get all tournament in the Pac-12 tournament my sophomore year, which was a big-time accomplishment yeah. for a young guy. Uh, and I think number two, I would go and say my game winner versus Utah as a freshman. Um, that was right before COVID stopped. So it was in the Pac-12 tournament. We had played Utah, uh, who was a really good team. I think we were in the nine. They were the eight in the Pac-12 that year. And a uh, game winner with one second left. We were down one at a game winner. Um, from, it was actually really, really crazy because two weeks before, we would played Arizona State as a freshman, and I had missed a game winner. And I'm very, very hard on myself. So I was very emotional, upset, and then I missed it. And I texted mm. the guy that passed to me, Trace Tinkle. I texted him. I said, hey, T, thanks for trusting me because um, he trusted a freshman. This is a fifth-year senior, game-winning shot, passed it up to a freshman. I was wide open, Dang. and I missed it. And, uh, you know, I got a lot Maybe of, you don't ever get that a chance again after and, it was a freshman, know, right? Yeah, and usually as a fifth-year senior, this is our best player. Dang. And he gave me another – and I texted him. I said, hey, man, you know, thank you for trusting me. If I get that, op awesome. if I get that opportunity again, I'm going to make it. And two weeks later in the Pac-12 tournament, down one, hmm. uh, Trace drives left, identical play, same exact play. He passed it to me, mm. and I make it. Uh, and then number one, the game winner was Colorado State, a half-court shot. Just insane, right? Yeah, that one is uh, – that'll probably never be passed up. <laughs> uh, that was definitely uh, one of the most incredible moments of this season. I think it, you look at, like, the last decade of, of Wolfpack Hoops, that's going to be a, a highlight play that we're going to loop, you know, just, yeah. just as a crazy hysteria moment. And you guys are not going to get second in the Mountain West. You're not going to get the seeding you did. Where 
obviously didn't work out necessarily in the tournament or anything like that, but that win uh, was definitely a defining one uh, down the stretch for the right. team. All right, so we're going to move down to the lounge for the last two segments. We're going to let Jared put his GM hat on and figure out how does he plug some of the missing pieces for the Wolfpack basketball team next year. And also, we're going to catch up on what's next for Jared as he looks to, to kick off his professional career. All right, the Jared Lucas Show rolls on from our Legends Bay Casino Lounge, powered by Circus Sports. This segment brought to you by Bradley, Drendel, and Janae. All right, Jared, so you're obviously done at Nevada. Your star teammate, Keenan Blackshear, his career has got, come to an end. Hunter McIntosh, uh, done at Nevada. We do know, uh, as of this morning, uh, John Rothstein saying that Trey Coleman, Daniel Foster committing to coming back to yep. the Wolfpacks. So you knew you got those pieces, KJ Himes. Uh, I believe has said before that he is going to return. So you know you've got some of those core guys. Nick Davidson, I think it looks like he'll, he'll be back. Um, as you look to plug some of the holes that are left open, if you're Steve Alford, you're this basketball staff, you're the GM of this team, what are you trying to plug with this team to get them to the next level? Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in that room every once in a while to hear what potentially the coaches are looking at. I don't get an idea about everything, but I have a little bit of an idea, obviously being a player and, and – loving our coaching staff that we have, but I know that we're going to get, tries to get somebody to replace me, a really good um, shooter, scorer. Obviously there's plenty of scoring, but that's the good thing about the portal. We have an opportunity that is extremely rare. With me, I averaged right around 18 and Keenan averaged uh, 14, 15. That's a lot of points available. That right? is a tremendous amount of points. So that void is gonna be, I mean, you can go to the portal and go, hey, we lost two, two guys that did a tremendous amount of stuff for us here's this opportunity for you. Come, you know what I'm saying? Come mm -hmm. take the opportunity. But like I'm saying, I think we need another scorer. We need another shooter. I think that was something that we lacked. Um, not only one shooter, our shooter scorer, which we need deeply, we need another guy to come in, a, hopefully a point guard that can come in and, and really shoot the ball. Which that was disappointing because Hunter was starting to fill that void. Right. He came in and was exactly what the team needed at that yeah. time. Six for six at Boise State. You can only imagine what you guys could have done with a, a healthy Hunter McIntosh, the way he was playing yeah, yeah. Uh, into the tournaments. Um, what makes you feel confident that Nevada can go out and be competitive recruiting-wise? Because you look at the portal, I mean, this thing is the wild, wild west. Like, yeah. why do you think people will be attracted to come play here? Uh, as somebody who's been in the portal before, I know, uh, you know, know what it's like, know what it's like to get your phone bombarded, and especially nowadays with NIL, it can make it a little complicated. But that's been the really good thing about our basketball program and everybody that supports our basketball team. We're extremely competitive in the NIL space. Uh, I think we should compete with any team, uh, potentially in the country, uh, when it comes to NIL and also comes our coaching staff. Uh, I do a tremendous job in the portal. Um, so I think we should be able to get some really good pieces. And then it just comes down to uh, getting guys on campus. Yeah. I know we'll have some guys on campus in the next week or two. I think we might even have a guy uh, coming in this weekend. So uh, hopefully we can seal the deal. I know the coaches are working their butts off. Definitely excited to see how the future of this roster materializes. Uh, it'll be tough, though, to not to see uh, you and Keenan and, and Hunter out there on the floor next year. It's going to be an adjustment for sure. I'll be the biggest fan watching it. You know, and I said it before <laughs> in my tweet, man. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be the biggest fan. Uh, I love everybody I've met here in the Reno community. So, so grateful uh, to, to have that opportunity. All right. So what's next for Jared? Uh, getting ready to kick off his pro career. We're going to talk about that as we wrap up the show right after this. All right, our final segment brought to you by Wolfpack Moving. What's next? Oh, uh, yeah, for me, it's going to be, one, putting my name um, in the NBA draft process, feeling some of that stuff out, whether that be um, in the G League, um, if I'm blessed with the opportunity, potentially work my way into the NBA. I know I'm not going to be a draft pick, uh, so it won't be uh, that easy. And then potentially overseas. So i got to find an agent in the next couple of days. I've been all over the phone um, trying to find an agent and then go from there, and everything else will fall into place, hopefully. I know. I think the exciting thing is in this day of basketball, there's opportunities all over the world. Right. There's places you can play, make good money, and, and have a great basketball career, whether it's stateside or somewhere else. Right, right. So all that stuff will all happen um, in the next, hopefully next week, uh, next week or so once I get an agent, and then with training and, and all that good stuff. All right. I know you want to give a, a shout-out uh, as we wrap up our final show. Well, well, first of all, I want to thank you, Alex. I mean, I'm so grateful to be able to do this. It's been, uh, you know, obviously so much fun. I wanted to try to get into this this type of stuff and to be able to do it and give me this platform is something I'm, I'm forever grateful for. And everybody at NSN, 
uh, thank you because it's been it's been awesome to be able to give me this opportunity. Wolfpack Moving, thank you. Um, also, Bradley Drennel and Janae, um, thank you again, and also Reno Acker. Um, all you guys have really really helped me and also helped this show and make this a poss make this show a possibility. So thank you, I really appreciate it. Best of luck in everything, man. Always a Wolfpack Legends. That's it for the Jerry Lucas Show.